an entitled husband asked me to take photos of his family for Mother's Day for free. And while we're trying to get this organized, he freaks out and starts screaming at his entire family, stressing everybody out and honestly causing a lot of problems. So as a result, I enlarged his head specifically in every photo just to get back at him for his awful attitude. Here's what happened. So I first want to start off by saying that I'm not a professional photographer, but friends and family ask me to take photos for them all the time. I love portrait photography and I'm happy to do the favor, but sometimes people are really awful and annoying and then it really grates my skin that I'm spending my evening and weekend doing a photo shoot and then processing these photos for free. So a few years ago, I had a really, really bad client. A colleague asked me to do a family shoot on Mother's Day. I knew I would have the morning to play with before going to see my own mom, so I accepted. It was going to be at a winery in the country and my colleague offered to pay for me to join them for brunch as well, which honestly was just a bonus. We carpooled together and it wasn't until we got there that I realized that it wasn't just going to be my colleague, as well as her husband and her kids. It was my colleague's husband's entire family. Brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, parents, and even both grandmas. 27 people in total. I'm immediately panicking about how long it's going to take to do this shoot and mention to my colleague and her husband that I have to leave in three hours to get back to my family's Mother's Day activities. My colleague's husband said it'll be fine, but I really just don't have a choice. I carpool there. So I try and relax and just have a good time. Brunch goes on forever. And when we're finished, we only have an hour for photos. I figure that should be fine if cutting it a bit close. And I ask my colleague's husband to help me keep his family organized and to keep things moving. I plan out the normal shots with my colleague's husband where everybody's together. There's family groups, there's kids and stuff like that. And then my colleague's husband starts asking for couple shots as well. Then he wants sibling shots. I eventually text my family and let them know that I'm going to be a little bit late, but hoping it won't be too bad because my colleague's husband will keep people moving. An hour and a half later and everyone is having a bad time. The kids are crying. It's taking forever to get any shots at all. And the reason being is that my colleague's husband is yelling at people, hurling commands and orders, barking, foaming at the mouth. It's incredibly awful. The winery people come over a few times and ask us to keep it down. But this guy starts yelling at them too. At this point, I'm just praying that they kick us out. I try telling my colleague's husband that I have to leave and that we can try again for photos another time. The family even tries to leave, but we are stopped. No, we must endure. When he tells his sons that he's going to knock the snot out of them if they don't stop crying, something just snaps inside of me. I stop trying to cheer people up. I stop trying to get fun photos or happy smiles. I just take the photos that we need so we can all just get out of there. When I eventually got home, I do what I can with these miserable photos. I combine different frames to get group shots where everyone looks happy. When that doesn't work, I touch up facial expressions so that people look less stressed out. I steal bits from candid shots earlier in the day. These are literally impossible masterpieces when I'm through with them. I spend hours and hours making sure these pictures are going to hang in living rooms forever. Then I go through every single photo featuring my colleague's husband, absolutely every single one of them, and just enough to be slightly noticeable while also just enough to not make it look weird or awkward, I physically enlarge his head in every single photo. And I don't regret this form of petty revenge in the slightest. This right here is my immediate problem with carpooling. What if I don't want to be there anymore? What if the people I'm going with are actually crazy and I'm going to be stuck in some weird situation without any way of getting out of there? That's exactly what the original poster got stuck in. They were giving photos to these people for free, which was a big mistake by the way, and they couldn't escape this situation even after their colleague's husband was freaking out. So I don't blame you for getting pictures and then saying you know what I'm out of here let's get out of here right now. The original poster also went on to say that they learned their lesson and they won't be doing any kind of work like that ever again for free and I really don't blame them. Doing that much work hours and hours of work just to try and make those photos approachable would have been miserable just to do it on my own time and without getting any kind of payment because I can only imagine trying to keep my cool with some weirdo screaming at their family. If you like Am I the Jerk you're probably going to love Am I the Genius? Check it out, link down below in the description. An entitled vegan treats everybody in the restaurant I'm at like garbage. So I decide to get petty and I get revenge on this lady in the funniest way possible. Here's what happened. So I never really believed in the stereotype of the condescending, holier-than-thou vegan. I figured it was an invention of omnivores that simply like to make fun of vegans and project some kind of judgmental attitude on them. And then I met her. She came 
into this really solid Asian fusion restaurant that does carry out orders. She was talking to her friend and the gist of the conversation was that she was appalled that she was even in this restaurant. The food didn't even count as vegan since they also served meat. In fact, for the 10 minutes that I knew her, she basically had nothing nice to say about anyone or anything. It was pretty spectacular listening to one person manage to say nothing nice for literally 10 minutes. She could have won a gold medal at the Jerk Olympics. I'd been standing in line patiently waiting to place an order with one person in front of me. As she walked in, that person finished ordering, at which point she breezed by me like I didn't even exist. I'd like a tofu lo mein, please. The woman behind the counter looked at me and I coughed politely. I'm sorry, but I was here first. This elicited the biggest, most, how dare you waste my time look in her eyes that I've ever seen. And she wordlessly stepped back. I ordered a chicken fried rice and then she ordered her tofu lo mein. And we stepped back to wait for our food. Ten minutes later, the first order popped up, at which point this woman, mindlessly chatting with her friend about how much someone they both knew is a total jerk, swiped the order without thinking and without a thank you and stormed for the door in a desperate hurry to ruin other people's evenings somewhere else. My first thought was, um, isn't it likely that my order finished before yours? And I almost said it. And then I realized she was storming out with a meal she really, really didn't want. The next meal popped up about two minutes later. I grabbed it knowing knowing there was a solid chance it was the tofu and thanked the very nice woman behind the counter and left without stopping to open it. Afraid that if I wasted a second's time, that angry shrew might have stormed back in and corrected her oversight. So, as a result, I triumphantly ate a tofu lo mein back at home that night. Well, to be honest, I ate the lo mein and I picked around the tofu. I don't know if that harpy returned demanding her correct meal or if she just got home, realized it was chicken fried rice, and threw it away dejectedly. I just hope that she felt some level of misery that she seemed to enjoy forcing on everyone else around her. Honestly, I can't stand people like that. She not only cut you in line and tried to get ahead of you, but she also rolled her eyes as if you were the problem. You were literally standing there waiting to go next, and she just waltzed in front of you, acting like she's better than pretty much everybody there. And it also sounded like she didn't really want to be at this restaurant in the first place. She was complaining the entire time that it wasn't strictly vegan, and honestly just acting like a jerk, talking loudly with her friends and then some. So good for you for getting back at her even in such a petty way. I find it really funny and you know what? Based on her attitude, the fact that you could inconvenience her even just in a small way really is just a small moral victory. My sister is trying to blame me on my father's health issues and I'm so offended I seriously don't know what to do. For the last half a year, I've given up my apartment and my life in a huge way to help my dad while he was having some medical issues. Earlier in the year, he was in the hospital with pneumonia. He also is in the hospital to receive a pacemaker surgery. He is a widow as my mom unexpectedly passed away two years ago after a very brief health issue. She was younger than him and it's been difficult on all of us. I have tried to help alleviate a lot of the burden by basically deciding to temporarily move in with him even though in the past he has had narcissism issues and has been emotionally awful at times. I knew the situation would be temporary and I figured it would be the best transition to eventually hire someone to help him out. My sister lives about 20 minutes away and comes over once a week, mainly just to have brunch with us. A lot of the times, she becomes very controlling and has very similar personality traits to my father. She tries to tell me what to do in regards to his care or just general house things and tries to correct things that are not issues, even though she's around a very minimal amount of the time. This past week, my dad was back in the hospital and diagnosed with an early stage of congestive heart failure. The doctor seemed optimistic that there are things my dad can do to help alleviate this, but that it is a minimal stage. One of the big things my doctor mentioned was stress, which is something my dad tends to get a lot on his own. Today, my sister went to go see my dad in the hospital and wanted to talk to the doctor and then call me afterwards, even though I already had all of the medical information. She then sent me a bunch of messages, basically telling me that we need to work on not getting him stressed out and that she knows he's part of the problem, but that I need to play a role in not getting him worked up. She basically was talking down to me as if I'm the reason that he gets stressed out when in reality, I've been a huge part of his caretaking and helping alleviate that stress in his life. When my father and I have had arguments in the past, it's been due to him getting stressed out about something not necessary and me reacting to it and defending myself. She's had explosive arguments with him over the years and I find it very hypocritical her talking like this. She made it sound like she's perfectly good with him and that I really need to work on my 
emotional reactions to him. I feel very attacked, as if she was trying to blame me for his stress levels, and trying to act as if he's not the number one issue of his own stress. She was sending me a bunch of messages, so I ended up calling her and telling her that ultimately, he's in control of his own stress, and I've helped alleviate a lot of it by moving in with him. She then told me that this is always what I do, and I get defensive when I get called out on something. She then sent a bunch of other messages after hanging up on me, and was very holier than thou, and talking down to me, as if I'm not the one with him 99% of the time, when she's there 1% of the time. She was extremely hostile to me on the phone, and was also incredibly rude, saying that I can't just take ownership and just agree to this. She kept sending messages, so I just stopped responding, because I didn't even want to continue arguing. I don't know what to do anymore. I feel as if I'm alone in my own family, as my mom was the closest person that I had. What should I do? Honestly, it really does sound like your sister's a problem here. She clearly has explosive arguments with her dad, and she causes a lot of problems in his life. So I really do take your side on this one. You're there 99% of the time, and she shows up every now and then for brunch. I mean, how can she possibly understand the nuance of what he's going through? It also doesn't help the fact that she is clearly in denial. Like, okay, she wants to try and claim she knows what's best for her dad. Maybe she should step up more and try and do more around the apartment. And that might even be a good solution to really see what she's all about. Maybe suggest and be like, okay, I've had my turn of helping dad out. How about I get my own apartment and you move in with him? And you can bet that her response to that would probably be to just not want to do that. Because it doesn't sound like she actually wants to be involved in her dad's situation, but instead it really sounds like she wants to boss you and her dad around. And in my opinion, that is so unfair. My boss tries to micromanage me at work, so I decide to maliciously comply and as a result, he gets in more trouble than he ever thought possible. Here's what happened. So this happened at work about 10 years ago. For some context, at the time of this incident, I had been working for a big box superstore for about 12 years, five of which as a department manager. I managed three areas, fresh meat, frozen seafood, and prepackaged deli, as well as breakfast meals. I supervised two part-timers and two full-timers. I reported to three supervisors, ranking in order of the assistant manager, a co-manager, and then the store manager. So on one particular Thursday morning, it was just myself and one of my full-timers. We'll call him Carl. Carl is not his real name. Carl was on duty until 3 o'clock p.m., myself until 4 p.m., and no one else after that. My other full-timer was on his day off. One part-timer was not available Thursday through Saturday, and the other was on vacation. Coverage was thin at best and would continue to be that way through the weekend. Having been super light on coverage all week due to one of my guys being on vacation, the deli wall was looking a little thin. On this Thursday morning, I had to decide how best to prepare for the weekend. I knew that I would not have enough staff to commit a person to filling the deli wall on Friday or Saturday. As soon as I had finished breaking down Thursday morning's delivery with Carl, I began busting my butt to get the deli wall as full as possible before I left that day. That way, I could have the guys focus on the fresh meat wall throughout the weekend, where I knew it would be super busy. While I did this, I entrusted Carl to fill the fresh meat wall for Thursday night's 4 p.m. rush. He was a very hard worker despite his age and health. I knew he could handle it on his own. Around 11 o'clock a.m., Carl had to take his lunch break, and while he was gone, my co-manager by the name of Scott, also not the real name, arrives to work and sees only me, and I'm filling the deli wall while only half of the fresh meat wall had been stocked thus far. Scott does not like this. He tells my assistant manager to have me swap the fresh meat wall, as it's more important for that night's customers. I immediately seek out Scott to tell him why this was a bad idea, as well as why I am filling up the deli walls and not the fresh meats. But Scott doesn't care. He doesn't want to hear what I have to say. I am to do exactly as I am told. He does not want me to fill the deli wall, only the fresh meat wall. Did I mention that Scott is ex-military and still acts like he's enlisted? It's really annoying and it's really frustrating. So I decided to maliciously comply. I did exactly as Scott told me. After having only worked about an hour on the deli wall, I put all the freight back into the cooler and began filling up the fresh wall. Carl returned from lunch, confused to see me. I explained what had happened before taking my own lunch. Upon my return, the fresh wall was nearly finished, but I went ahead and helped Carl finish filling it. Soon, we were done and just topping it off throughout the rest of the afternoon. If someone bought a pack of beef, we both went back into the cooler to bring out another one. Same with the chicken, the pork, anything. We walked back and forth one package at a time, all the way up until Carl left at 3pm and then I left at 4pm. As I walked past the deli wall on my way out, it already was looking so much worse than it had when I first arrived that morning. When I arrived at work at 7 in the morning on Friday morning, 
The first thing I did was walk past that deli wall. I was completely caught off guard to see that it had been filled. As I'm theorizing who could have possibly filled it, the assistant manager comes by and sees the puzzled look on my face. She comes over to me with a bit of a grin on her face, and the following is what she had told me had happened after I left the night before. Essentially, more and more of the wall emptied out as people shopped. It began to look like people were panic buying food. It had gotten that empty. Around 8 o'clock p.m., a market manager came in to do his own shopping, and I did not explain this before, but a market manager is who my store manager reports to. In other words, someone who has even greater authority than anyone in the store. The market manager goes to buy some lunch meat, and lo and behold, there's almost nothing on the shelf. He notices the entire wall is nearly bare, and he is furious. He then demands that Scott comes over to the deli wall immediately, and it was right about then that Scott gets over to the wall and gets chewed out. The market manager then orders Scott to get the wall stocked immediately. Scott is only now understanding the scope of his blunder. The wall is so empty that it will take a few hours to fill, and it is in this moment that Scott realizes how hard he messed up because he didn't check the schedule earlier and is now discovering that there is no one in the meat department that evening, so there is no one that he can delegate this task to. So guess who ended up having to fill the deli wall? That's right. Scott had no choice but to do it himself, and he didn't even get done until midnight. Remember, he had arrived just before 11 o'clock that same day, and he had to be back at 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Also, Scott is salaried, so he got no overtime for the extra hours worked. And by the way, Scott never did apologize for me for not trusting my judgment and for not listening to me, but he definitely learned his lesson. From that day forward, he did not try to micromanage me, and he just let me run my department unimpeded. That is honestly a funny story. And you know what? Scott got exactly what he deserved. If he just let the guy who runs the section do his thing, he would have had no problem with this being filled up and he himself would not have had to do it in front of the guy over the entire store. I mean, how funny is that? It really drives me crazy when someone tries to micromanage me over something they have no idea about. So good for the original poster for maliciously complying. And hopefully Scott will stay out of your business in the future. Am I the jerk for saying that I'll be driving myself as well as paying for my own room on an upcoming family vacation just so I won't have to be forced to babysit my nephews. Here's what happened. So I was repeatedly stuck playing the part of helper and babysitter on family outings. I had to move out of my parents' house because I kept being forced to help watch my three nephews. Last year, we took a family vacation in the summer to the coast. I rode along with my parents and they paid for my hotel room. Only I had to share that room with three rowdy boys because my sister and her husband husband wanted a room to themselves. I was promised time to do my own things on my vacation, but instead, I ended up having to help with these kids. I complained to everyone about it and was reminded I was there for free. And then we pretty much just did only one thing I wanted to do, which was to take a tour of an art gallery. I really enjoy doing this because I'm at the coast, but the kids found it very boring. This year, my parents have a trip to the beach planned in June, and they assumed that I'd be riding along the same way as last year, but I refused. I said I'd be driving myself and paying for my own hotel stay to have my own room. And when I said this, my parents were shocked and tried to remind me of the cost. I said it was no worries. I've got a good job and a decently running car. I can more than afford it. And it's right about then that the whatabouts came into play. So I stated the previously listed things as to why I'm driving myself and paying for myself. I want to be able to enjoy this vacation as an adult and not be treated like a child like last year. For context, I'm 23 years old. My parents told my sister, and she called to blow up at me, that I'll be ruining the vacation if I'm off doing my own thing while she has to wrangle her three boys. I ended up yelling at her that last year, all she did was rope me into her mess. I didn't really get to do much of anything that I wanted to do, and I was treated like the bad guy for wanting to just go to an art gallery. I'm a grown man. I deserve my own vacation, too. Now, my sister is not speaking to me, and my parents are still trying to convince me to just ride along with them to keep the peace. But I'm still refusing, but the pressure is honestly getting to me. So this really begs the question, am I the jerk for not giving in? I know they'll have a pretty hard time when they won't have another person there to help, but I really think I deserve my own vacation. I don't think you're the jerk at all. You want to know why your sister is upset as well as your parents? Because now they don't have a free babysitter. Like seriously, that's the only reason they want you to ride along. If you carpool with these people, not only will you not have a way of getting home, but they're also just going to slap you with these children and force you to babysit at them. And I completely agree with you. That is unfair for you and your time. Driving yourself as well as getting a hotel really does seem like a logical conclusion if you want to try and enjoy this vacation at all. And clearly this 
sister just needs to be a better parent. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. Like, maybe you should try to work on getting your boys in line and making them behave instead of just trying to ship it off to your sibling and being like, it's your problem now, you do it. Like, I'm sorry, that's completely inappropriate and you really should not do that to your sibling. I know for me personally, I would be very hesitant to even want to go on this vacation in the first place because if you think the pressure is going to be bad over the phone, just wait until you're in the same area as these people. You can bet they're going to try and force these kids on you no matter what. Like, seriously, these are her kids. They are her responsibility. They're not yours. And she doesn't care about the vacation in general. Your sister only cares about her vacation. She doesn't care what you're doing. She just wants to be free of those kids and not have to deal with them. That's honestly what's going on here. So if you do decide to go on this vacation, just realize there's probably going to be a lot of annoying pressure on your back. And you know what? You don't deserve that in the slightest. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.